Once upon a time, somebody told me, procrastination is the cause of my sorrow. I don't know what the big word means. I will look it up tomorrow. Good morning. That was a lie. I am not a procrastinator. In fact, I was just Google searching and I realized that in 2014 they could identify the animal in me. It's called procrastinators. I'm here to challenge the paradigm, to ignite the debate and to possibly create an impact. There's this short story about producing light. So thousands of years ago, man discovers fire. And over the next couple of thousands of years, the engineers of the then era experiment with various wicks and oils and candles and lanterns. The box gets very clearly established that light is produced by burning something. It takes a Thomas Edison something like 10,000 years and probably a work of a lifetime to change the box from, to change the thinking of his own and that of the world from box one, which is light is produced by burning something to box two, which is light is produced by preventing something from burning. The same thing being the filament. And so is born the incandescent light bulb. From modern times to the origins, let's try and understand a bit more about procrastination. Data is the new oil. In less than a second, something like two and a half million searches on the subject of the tips to stop procrastinating. So, so, so strong is the bias that a search on how to procrastinate leads to only and only the promptings which are in the zone of stopping the menace. Surveys around the world, 95% of humans report themselves to be procrastinators. Some quarter of them believe themselves to be chronic procrastinators. At any given point in time, stopping procrastinating is seen to be the topmost rated problem reported by people. Well, the box is very clearly established that procrastination is a problem. That's French for to the contrary. They could be way wrong. Let's look at some history. Estimating is timeless. Socrates, Aristotle, they treated it very highly. They came out, they coined a term called abrasia to describe it. And they sat around and they thought and thought and thought and not did anything till they had to. Forward till next day. That's where the Latin origin of the word comes from. Ancient Egyptians waiting for the right time or waiting wisely is how they described it. So the connotation of procrastination with something which is negative is a recent phenomena, is a modern phenomena. So cases of successful procrastinators galore. There is Leonardo da, Leonardo da Vinci, the Renaissance man, a man of incredible talent. He took something like 16 long years to create the masterpiece. And it was under a threat of cutting funds that he finally delivered the Last Supper. During these 16 long years, he was experimenting and dabbling into mathematics and physics, into art and science, into engineering and architecture. The Gettysburg Address, the famous Gettysburg Address of Abraham Lincoln. Till the previous morning, he was still finalizing his draft. Mozart's story, no different. Thomas Edison would sleep with two steel balls in his hands to make the most of this state between wakefulness and deep sleep, what in ancient Indian yogic science is known as uh, yoga nidra. Not in his draft, the famous four words as he walked up to the podium, Martin Luther King. So Dalai Lama, Mark Twain, Sweet Steve Jobs, all of them were putting things off, noodling on things, right? And letting more divergent ideas come through. So let's look at let's look at a bit of science now. So you can thank biology for your procrastination. It's a showdown between logic and emotion, between the should path versus the want path, and between the emergency versus the autopilot mode. Humans are time inconsistent. So say the psychologists. The silly human brain values immediacy over long-term rewards. The economists call it hyperbolic discounting. Regardless of what you call it, the main idea is the same. We treat our present selves to be different from our future selves. <clears throat> Time for some mind games, introducing the first of the two battles of the day.
So we have these two beasts in our head, the future self and the present self. The future self is concerned about the long-term goals and the present self looks for instant gratification. The future self sets the goals, the present self is the one that takes action. So judgment time, you, the present self, is the one who is making a choice for the future self. Turns out, the future self is a stranger. Yeah, you heard me right. The future self is a stranger. The brain regions involved in processing information about the future self are the same as that for a stranger. So such statements like, I don't feel like it, I don't want to, are all reflective of this phenomenon. The future self wants to be trim and fit. The present self wants a pizza. An iPhone today, not the savings for retirement years later. So turns out the present self, the experiencing self, the living self is often at odds with the future self, the remembering self. In his groundbreaking research on how human minds make decisions, Nobel laureate Daniel Kahneman, he divided our brains into two systems, system one and system two. Instantly reading her aggressive mood or detecting one object to be more distant than the other or orienting to a sudden sound or completing the phrase bread and butter or experiencing disgust when shown a horrible picture and this are all examples of system one which is absolutely instantly fast. Now how about this? or bracing for the starter gun in a race, focusing attention on the clowns in the photograph, or looking for the woman with burgundy hair are all requiring mental work, deliberate and conscious mental work. The rational is who we think we are, and although system two believes itself to be where the action is, the system one, the intuitive self is really the hero. So when we talk of artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is going to be challenging the system two which is where algorithmically they will be able to do it better than humans. But system one, the intuitive self is the one that is really going to be the hero. Surveys around the world show that the pornographic image seen on the right is seen to be more pornographic than the one on the left. Now this is simple because intuitively the image on the right, the lady on the right is wearing no clothes. But counterintuitively, less skin is exposed on the image on the right. Counterintuitively is rationally, logically. So logic is perhaps overrated sometimes. Meritocracy may then be is a myth. So we have these two beasts in our head, the rational one and the unrational one, the reasonable one and the unreasonable one. The reasonable one adjusts to the circumstances that he's put in. The unreasonable one changes the circumstances to suit his requirements. Therefore, Progress is only possible through the unreasonable one. So I, so there are, there are, there are, turns out we are not one but two people. So I want you to wake up, to choose, to back the unreasonable Steve Jobs in you, to back the unreasonable Buddha in you, to back the unreasonable Mahatma Gandhi in you. Yes, this little unreasonable guy in our head he has the power of infinity. Procrastination, it is not failing. It's a signal that your priorities are askew, a sign that a greater intelligence, a superior power is trying to nudge you in an absolutely new direction. Turns out human minds are wired for closure. We need not worry too much about putting things off. Closure craving is a proven psychological state. So the problem sits somewhere in the subconscious of our head and that's why you had the Archimedes uh, Eureka moment. Procrastinators very rarely do nothing. While you're procrastinating, your subconscious is working. This is how ideas germinate and generate. So procrastination is not laziness. Laziness is the unwillingness to act. Cognitive disengagement sleeping on things, reflection, these are all procrastinators' secret weapons. Battle number two, defined by technology and the deluge of information, introducing the exciting times that we live in as a dynamic. I know it's becoming interesting now. 
So in a world dictated increasingly by the, by the economics of attention, procrastination derails everyone. So we have a third monster now, the greatest procrastinating machine that rules our lives. Yes, the one that sits in our pockets. And then there is time, the time which is natural, which is unidirectional. It's a very simple thing. The physical aspect of time is all in the natural zone. Importantly, measurement of time, keeping time, is something which is man-made. Research now shows that procrastination may not have anything to do with time management. In fact, trying to tell a procrastinator to just do it is akin to telling a, a, a clinically depressed person to just cheer up. So we have these two battles inside our head. One of them is, of course, driven by the two beasts, which is the reasonable one and the unreasonable one. And you have two other battles outside of us, which is driven by this technology here and the need for keeping time. But what we are also blessed with is this energy inside of us, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. Boom! If you get all of these together, you have magic happening. So when it comes to getting things done, time and technology are outside of us. What is inside of us is this energy, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual, and the only weapon of influence is this energy. Let's talk a bit about the nature of life. 4 minutes 33 seconds of pure silence as a masterpiece in 1952. Incomprehensible in the Western context is how American experimental composer John Cage described his creation as. This was in turn inspired by Rauschenberg's 1951 series of white paintings. These were seemingly blank canvases, even as they used house paint to actually draw it. All visual artists know that the white spaces are as important as the drawing, just as in music, pauses are as important as the sound. And yet in the business of life, we rush to fill in any empty spaces available with noise. In fact, I would argue that some of the most engaging ideas have something purposefully missing. Limiting information engages the imagination. Comic illustrators know it too well. They know that the real magic, the real play is happening in the white space between the illustrated panels out there. The story is left for interpretation out here. This is where the reader is drawn in. This is where the reader is engaged. The best of chefs will attribute the secret of the finest taste to the value of slow cooking. So this powerful ability of the human mind to create meaning from missing information, all innovators, all visual artists now know what the neuroscientists know. More is less. Last section. Procrastination corresponds to self-awareness. The best way to master it, meditation. Science shows that alternating between awareness and breathing leads to switching seamlessly between system one and system two. So when isn't procrastination procrastination? When it is part of the process. The truth is I noodle. Then I noodle and I noodle some more. So your body goes on autopilot, your brain gets busy forming neural connections between ideas and problems, and <clears throat> they call it procrastinating, I call it thinking. Procrastination puts the individual at the center of things. What is best for the world may not be the best for me. Perhaps your procrastination will help you escape a wrong major, a wrong life, a wrong investment, Procrastination is an empowering force. Stop beating yourself up. Gain more freedom. Break free. Love yourself unconditionally. Don't die with the music still in you. Procrastinate now. Don't put it off. Procrastination lets you put life first. I urge you to unleash the beast, the monk, the balanced energy in you. One step at a time. Yes, you can. Expand your comfort zone, your zone of genius, your hero range. Dhire dhire re mana, dhire sab kuch hoye. 15th century Sufi Indian mystic poet and saint, Sant Kabir.
माली सींचे सौ घड़ा रितुआ ए फल होए दिस स्क्रीन इंटेंशनली लेफ्ट ब्लैंक समिंग अप देर इज नथिंग आई द गुड और बैड इट्स ओनली थिंकिंग दैट मेक्स इट सो द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड व्यू प्रोक्रेस्टिनेशन इज बैड द एंशियंट वन नो इट इज नॉट देर आर अम्पटीन नंबर ऑफ सक्सेस केसेज ऑल अराउंड there is a battle for domination inside of us between the reasonable and the unreasonable beast there is a battle for for uh, attention outside of us driven by the technology and the time there is very clearly a universal energy which is around us there is the physical the mental and the spiritual energy which is inside of us now the nature of life is and the the need for respecting the white spaces the need for respecting the meditating pauses and the need for respecting the blank canvases needs to be understood so slow down now do not rush connect with yourself have the courage to press the power of the pause take a breath take a beat to align all of these it is not the mountains we conquer it's ourselves humko man ki shakti dena मन विजय करें दूसरों की जय से पहले खुद को जय करें थैंक यू